Hello, and good afternoon, chats, and the rest of you filthy degenerates. Welcome to the stream on a post-Turkey Day Saturday. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. At least better than the folks who don't live in the great nation of America. Now, I'm joking. America is a cesspool. And so are all the other countries. The world is terrible. But we're not here for that. We are here. We are here to spread positivity and blow up some damn robots. And we will be getting to that. So welcome to everybody that's here. Erst, I saw you in the chat. I saw the end in there as well. Welcome to the stream on a Saturday. More room. Welcome to the stream. I saw you up there at the very beginning of the chat log. Don't think you're going to sneak by. Rio, good to see you. Jacob Brodsky, first time in the chat. Good to see you as well. Glad you could join us on this Saturday stream, especially so early in the day. I normally stream in the evenings. Uh, so, you know, these noon streams are a little bit out of my uh, my typical streaming range. So thank you guys for coming out and joining me. And Devious, good to see you as well. As always, glad you guys could make it to the stream. Uh, so again, we're going to be playing some BTA today. Again, that's what the people want, so that's what I'm going to give you. And uh, we still have our ongoing campaign. Uh, it's been about a week since the last time we played. But uh, as promised on the Twitter machine, I do have a list of things to get into on this one, including uh, some Mech Bay Heresy to start out the stream. So we will get right over to that. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and remember to enable the game audio because I have a really bad habit of not doing that at the beginning of the stream. All right, so here we are again. For any of you that have been with the stream for a little while, this is going to look very familiar. And we're still sitting yeah. on our seven plus million C bills. And the end, getting a gift sub from Erst. Erst, thank you so much for the beginning of the stream gift sub. And the end, welcome to the cult of bad tactical decisions, where we have only one flavor of Kool-Aid, but it is Ecto Cooler. Um, again, Erst, thank you so much for the generosity. You guys, I always tell you, you don't yeah. have to do that, but I absolutely appreciate it when you do. And Dark Sarah, not to be outdone, throwing in five gift subs as well without even saying anything in the chat. You lurking some bitch, but thank you. Thank you once again for the support for the five gift subs. If you guys got a gift sub, please, please be sure to thank the folks that were were so generous to do that for you. And again, we, we appreciate you supporting the stream and supporting the community. Um, but yeah, so again, I, I told you guys before, I keep a notebook next to the desk because I always have lots and lots and lots of things to to write down about BTA. There's a lot of stuff going on. All right, Dork Sir. Well, if you're multitasking, I, I'll allow it. You can lurk as long as you're also making C bills. Uh, but yeah, so I've got a list of things to go over. So the first thing that I wanted to address, when I had a conversation with somebody about this over the holiday, and it was not somebody from the stream, it was just somebody I know in my own personal life that watches my streams. Um, and so I, I'm going to have to amend a rule uh, that I made a little while back, and that is in regards to folks that want to put their name in the game. Uh, so I hadn't thought about it because uh, we hadn't had that many people in the stream until recently. Uh, but I'm going to amend my rule and say I'm no longer going to allow people to buy into the game for a second time. And the reason I'm not going to do that is because we have a pretty limited roster. And unfortunately, I feel like there's probably some people that want to be in the game but they haven't had a chance to because we have limited slots open. And so, you know, we have some folks that have come back on a second time around. I, I think it makes it more interesting for your, those of you that put your name in the game because now there's actual risk involved. So that if the pilot does die, then that's it. That's the end. But it also gives the folks that aren't necessarily in the game yet a chance to be in the game if they want to pay the price. So, uh, again, for those that have already done it, I'm going to let it slide. But going forward, I'm not going to allow anybody to buy in a second time if they die in, in the campaign, unfortunately. And that's just to be fair to everybody. Um, 
but yeah, so we, we will we will address that if and when it comes up. And Brainin, Kailania, and WMC Fitz, welcome to the stream on this lovely Saturday. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Hopefully, uh, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, you had a good turkey day. And if not, then hopefully you at least had a a decent Friday anyway. Um, Uh-oh. So Kaiwani is redeeming already. Well, unfortunately, Kaiwani, we don't have any open spots on the roster right now, but I am going to write your name down, and you will be first on the list when we get to the next pilot that we hire. And Dark Sarah with the 100 bits, thank you for the Bezos bucks. We appreciate it. Oh, don't worry, Kailania. Someone will die because that's just the way things go in this mercenary company. It's it's not an if, it's a win. So, uh, oh, and Dark Sarah as well. Okay, okay, I see you as soon as I put that out there. Now everybody wants to be in the game. All right, that's fine. That's fine. But that's why I'm writing the list down. Like I said, we don't currently have any roster slots open, but in the near future, as we build up a little more clan tech, my hope is that we can get to a point where we can start taking on some flashpoints, and then we're going to need a pretty deep roster of pilots and mechs. So uh, when that happens, those folks will, will definitely get their time to shine. Uh, Stu, Stu, no. I don't know if you were here for it, because I just got done talking about it, but... Uh, I, I have amended the rule so that folks are not allowed uh, to buy themselves back in a second time. And I'm sorry about that, but I'm just trying to give all the folks that want to be in the game a chance to be in the game. And uh, if people keep buying themselves back in over and over again, then that's not going to happen. That's okay. That's okay. You're not in trouble. You might have missed it if you just got here. That's why I'm saying it's, it's fine, but I'm just I'm trying to be fair to everybody, trying to give everybody a fair chance. Um, but yeah, so first things first, let me see, because I, I have a pretty extensive list on here. So the number one thing, there were a couple of pilots, and, and I had been talking about this for a while, uh, in the barracks. I made some kind of not great decisions with some of our pilots early on in the campaign, because I forgot that the way that BTA pilot skills work is a little bit different. Um, and so as a direct result of that, I spec'd out some pilots like, for example... Game Master is currently in a tank. I have spec'd him out for mech combat. Um, and what I said I was going to do is, as we got a little hot further into the campaign and we had a little more liquid funds, I was going to start spending some money to try to slowly retrain our pilots. And that's what I was looking at over the break, was who are the pilots most in need of a respec right now? And the two that I settled on were Gravelion and Game Master. Uh, because Game Master is spec'd for a mech, but he isn't using one. And Gravel Lion is currently spec'd for a vehicle, but they're using a, a mech. So it, it's it's one of those things where I'm, I'm not going to respec everybody, but I do want to try to, when we can, respec one or two pilots just to get them more in line with what the skills should be in BTA and for the role that they're filling. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And these guys, I already know what I want to do with them. Um, so, again, the reason I'm doing this is because we have 7.3, um, it's, I mean, technically, Kailania, it's easier to just swap them into a different mech or vehicle, um, but the thing is, Game Master was originally gonna be a mech pilot, but then he sort of just fell into a vehicle, and he's been really good at it, so I want to just respec him for that, and Gravelion originally started out driving an APC, which I never intended to keep him in in the first place, but I went ahead and spec'd him for the APC anyway because he was in it for so long, with the expectation. Oh, sorry, Chet. Uh, with the expectation that we would go back and respec at some point in the future. Um, the other the other problem is you'll notice a lot of my pilots have multi-target, but I don't. I mean, in this company, we full alpha people all the time, so multi-target is not a super useful skill. Um, so that that's the other reason that I want to start to respect people. So today it's going to be Game Master and it's going to be Gravelion. They're some of the older pilots that we have in the company. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to spend a million dollars to retrain, well, a million C-bills, it's not dollars. A million space dollars 
to uh, retrain Gravelion. And we'll do the same with Game Master. Now I'm going to keep their skills relatively the same. Right, exactly. Like, like multi-target is really useful in vanilla battle tech, and it's really useful in rogue tech. It is much less useful in BTA, and that's just me doing dumb things and forgetting what game I'm playing. Uh, let me see. And we're going to give him Master Tactician, so he's going to get a little more initiative bonus. And we'll go with Eagle Eye. We'll do the same thing here, except in this case we're going to go with Battle Lord. And then we will spec Gravel Line out the rest of the way, um, the way that they already were. And uh, if you're looking at the, the the portrait for Gravel Lion, this is not permanent. Uh, so what happened is I went in to change the portrait for Game Master, as you can clearly see. Um, but when I did it, I accidentally set the portrait to Gravel Lion. And the problem is when you go to change a custom portrait, once you do that, you can't undo it. And so now the game needed a portrait, so I just gave him a generic one until we come up with one. Uh, I mean, if you're using a strategy, Brayden, that you use multi-target, by all means, go ahead and use it. But, like, the way that we have been playing the game in this campaign, where we're basically trying to go for melee and full alpha all the time on everything, multi-target's not super useful for that strategy. So that's that's part of the reason I want to get it off of most of our pilots, because it's just it's not a skill that we're using in this campaign all that much. Uh, but let's see. I, I have decided I'm going to keep Game Master in the tank. He's been doing really good. He was doing great with the AC-20 Hetzer. And he's also been putting in some really good work with um, with the Rommel that we have him in as well. Although I may change him from Guts to Piloting just to give a little more sprint speed. Uh, but we will see. I don't know. But we're going to retrain some. We'll go ahead and we're going to go down the normal vehicle line on this. And I'm pretty sure with Precision Master, you don't have to... Yeah, you don't have to be in a mech for Precision Master. There we go. And I think what I'm going to do instead is we're going to go down the piloting tree instead of the guts tree. And I'm going to use side slip. So if you don't know what side slip is, uh, it basically gives you um, the ability to ignore all movement. And the reason that I like this skill is because the Rommel is a tracked vehicle, we get slowed down by forests and water a lot. By having side slip for a single turn, we can just ignore all of those terrain limitations and we'll be able to get that Rommel where it needs to be a lot easier. So that's why I'm going with side slip. Um, but otherwise, I will go ahead and dump the rest into guts and we'll put in some tactics as well. I'm going to try and balance him out a little bit more on this one. There we go. Mech warrior training. And that will make him a competent vehicle pilot. So there we go. That's our respecking out of the way. So let me check that off the list. And then there's a couple of refits in the mech bay. So as promised, as promised, if you guys were catching me on the X-Bird, then you saw what I posted about reviving an idea. And if you got the reference, then you would know that this is the idea of which I am speaking. I, I may have found a way with clan tech to revive the insanity of the Saturday Night Fever. Oh, okay, so you're using the Achilles, Badwanger. That's... I thought about switching over to the Achilles, but then we went over to, um... We went over to clan space, and then at that point, it kind of didn't matter anymore. It's because now we're getting elementals, and we don't really need the inner sphere battle, battle armor. Um, but so here's here's the deal. Right now, the Saturday Night Fever is not really a Saturday Night Fever anymore, because it's just mounting some large lasers. And Ajax, welcome in to the stream on a Saturday... I'm going to guess, based on your first time chat, that you have spent some time on the YouTubes. But don't worry, we, we are not actually, we are not an official branch of the Van Zandt Free State Militia. 
Uh, I did serve with them, but unfortunately, uh, we are not an official branch or militia unit of them. We are, we are our own collection of idiots. Um, but yeah, so right now the Saturday Night Fever was kind of just refitted with what we had available. First thing we're going to do is get rid of all these large lasers. The second thing we're going to do is get rid of all these double heat sinks. And you are thinking to yourself, what the hell is wrong with you? What are you doing? Well, as usual, I had a look-see through the cargo holds, and I found something that I didn't realize that we had, but now that I know, I'm very happy that I checked. And the thing that I didn't realize that we had was this. I don't know where they came from, I don't know where we picked them up from, but we have two clan heatsink kits. Now you're probably saying we well, already have a double heat sink kit. Why would you why does it matter if it's the clan heat sink kit? Well, the answer is actually very simple. Clan heat sinks only take up two critical slots, where the doubles take up three. So, effectively, with the clan double heat sink kit, while it is expensive, we can fit more heat sinks into the Saturday Night Fever, and heat is its biggest problem. Now, as for the actual armament, we don't have a larger engine currently. Right now, the engine core is only a 275. I want to get this up to a 300. Normally, the grasshopper mounts a 280 by default, but I want to try to get this up to a 300 at least. What I'm going to do instead is... Nah, I would like to do pulse lasers, but we're not quite there. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to fill this puppy up with clan ER mediums. Just regular ER mediums. And that may sound stupid, but bear with me. Bear with me. Whoops, wrong one. Why, why do you do this to me? Oh, right, because the other one goes in the head. I forgot. So there we go. This right here has currently got eight medium lasers in it. At medium range, we're doing 235 damage if we hit with everything. Uh, you could do that, Ajax. You could do that. Uh, but the reason that I want to do this is because, as I said, right now we're currently running a 275 engine in this thing. I want to upgrade this to a 300 at some point when we're able to get one. Now you'll notice we're only at 54 out of 70 tons. I can max out the armor. Now we're only at 55 tons. So now I can do some really crazy stuff. I can plug in a tag. I can go in and say, well, let's give it a clan micropulse. And you're saying, why clan micropulse? Easy. It ignores six pips of evasion. So if we find ourselves a particularly speedy target, we can probably hit it with these micropulse lasers anyway. Now, the reason that I want to go with the ER medium clans is because they have a maximum range of 420 meters. The large laser only has a maximum range of 600. So we're only losing 180 meters of maximum, uh, a maximum range, but we gain so much additional damage because each of these lasers is only about 50 damage. So we're doing about 200 damage with these weapon systems. What we're doing instead with the mediums is almost 240 damage. Now, Urs, that is that is the trick, if you're mobile enough. That's why I want to put a 300 in this. So the grasshopper is going to be pretty slow for now, but eventually, when we're able to put a larger engine in it, it will be able to get to grips. Currently, we're still sitting at the 4.6. It's kind of ass, but it's a heavy mech, and we can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Perhaps, perhaps, but we're, we're working with what we've got, Alakandri. Um, with that said... The first thing that I want to do before we start talking about cramming support weapons in, and you'll see why I'm not filling these up here in just a second, because right now, our alpha is 144 on heat. So, number one, I'm going to stick an exchanger in there. That's going to just, by default, the changer, exchanger one is going to decrease all weapon heat by 10%. Now, we're going to fill this puppy up with clan doubles. And we're going to fill it up with a lot of clan doubles. But it's going to do the job. 
I think we can also get rid of the pharaoh on this. Because we don't really need it right now. So I can now put in some there in the arms. And there you go. For a little less than 300k, we now have a potential alpha damage of almost 240. And we can almost sink that. Our heat delta is only 10. So we could fire this almost every turn and not overeat. Yeah, the exchangers are great. The only problem is we haven't really been finding them that much in this campaign. But now that we have one, I, I absolutely want to put it to use in one of our laser boats. So this is not the final form of the Saturday Night Fever. Correct, Urs. We can fire all of the mediums almost every turn. Again, we're, we're up plus 10 on the delta. As long as we're not jumping around like idiots, we can absolutely make that work. So this is just the preliminary build. This is to get the Saturday Night Fever back into fighting form. Eventually, I do plan to do more with it. But we've got to get some more equipment to make that happen. But this makes the Saturday Night Fever more what it used to be. Uh, I don't think so, Ajax. I'm, I remember checking and I didn't really see any. Uh, like, we had a laser insulator on one, uh, but we don't really have any targeting computers or anything like. We have the precision computer, but that's two tons, and all it does is give us breaching shot and lower recoil. But it's a laser boat, so it doesn't have recoil. Uh, Brayden, I thought about adding an XL, and I will try to do that eventually, but right now, the only XL we have is a clan XL. And, uh, as you can clearly see, that adds 1.7 million C-bills to the refit cost by putting in a clan XL. Uh, unfortunately, clan XLs don't play well with inner sphere mechs, and they make the refits very, very expensive, as we learned with this mech because it used to have a Clan XL in it, and we had to downgrade it because it got blown up. But that's okay, because we could potentially find Inner Sphere XLs later down the road. And that's what I'm saying, Ajax. Like, once we find an Inner Sphere XL, it will give us the same weight reduction, we'll just have to give up a couple more critical slots. And we can absolutely do that. Uh, we could put Pharaoh in it, but I, I don't... The, the problem is we're reaching the limit of, like, see, we're, we're at the limit of our critical slots. So even if I put in the Pharaoh, we, all of the slots are filled up. So, like, yeah, the Pharaoh will reduce weight, but we can't do anything with that weight because we don't have any more space. And I think, does the Clan Pharaoh use less criticals? It does, so we could potentially do that, but you see how much more expensive it is. Like, if we go in with the regular Pharaoh, it's only an extra 100k. If we go in with the clan Pharaoh, it's 530. So, again, clan stuff doesn't play nicely with inner sphere stuff. Um, but yeah, so this, this again, is just a preliminary design. I mean, I guess we could, we, we could, we have some extra money. I could go stupid and fill in the support weapons here, but I just... Like, right now, again, th this is not the final form of the Saturday Night Fever. This is just where we are today. Um, we will continue to revise this design, but this gets it back where we are. Oh, yeah, no, and, and that's the thing. Intersphere XLs are extremely vulnerable, but they're also very, very cheap. And uh, if you haven't been in these streams before, pilot safety is, like, fourth or fifth on our priority list over damage, armor, and melee, and then fuzzy dice in the cockpit. So, for now, we're going to go with this. Logged and noted. Shouldn't be too hard. And again, we will revise the design as we get our hands on more clan tech. It's just a matter of time. Oh, you know what? That's not a bad idea, Ajax. I didn't think about e-cooling. Um, because, again, we just don't really have any e-cooling. And we're currently in uh, Jade Falcon space. So even if they have them in the shop, they're going to be super expensive, like, compared to what they normally are, because they don't like us very much. But they're things to consider. They they are definitely things to consider. Did we? I've, 
Maybe, was it a, maybe it was a one or a two. Let me check. What do we got in components? Equipment. I wish they did a, yeah, so we got a one. We got a plus one. Um, and I think, don't you have to have a, oh no, it's a 275. I was going to say, you have to have a certain size engine to use these. So yeah, we do have one e-cooling, um, but I, I've already started this. So like I said, I, we will refit it. We will continue to work on it. I'm not trying to optimize right now. I just want to get the the Saturday Night Fever back in to its normal rotation rather than being a large laser boat. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do, let me see. Uh, oh, right. The Disco Inferno, our, our crazy little small laser boat. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do with this one is upgrade the ER smalls that we have to ER pulses. Uh, and I forget how I was going to do that. Let me see. I think I removed the ECM suite to make that happen. But then again, now that I think about it, the ECM suite is super good because uh, it stops them from using sensor lock and reducing your evasion. I'm trying to think of how I did this. I did it yesterday and I cannot remember how. Uh, the Kung Fu leg is actually left over from Solaris, but it doesn't weigh anything, so that's why I leave it on there. I, it, it doesn't hurt anything by having it in there. Uh, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta try to think for a second about how I made this work. Um, cause I do this, like I write down, hey, you need to refit the Disco Inferno, but then I don't write down how I'm supposed to do that. Maybe it was a heat sink that I removed. Yeah, because we're already minus 8 delta, so we could potentially remove a heat sink. And we're still minus 4 delta. So yeah, with the pulse lasers, we can fire the full alpha on this thing, and we're still good on heat. So that's what it was. And again, this is a very cheap refit, but it gets us pulse lasers. So it's going to reduce your maximum range a little bit, but you're not going to do a whole lot with, you know, 18 damage times 2. Whereas the small pulse lasers ignore six evasion depths. And especially in a light mech fight, that's going to be super useful when everybody's running around like crazy. This is going to give you good accuracy on them anyway. So that was, that was my update to the design on the Disco Inferno. For now, at least. Right. I'll get it in the schedule. And that was the refits that I had on, on the deck. Um, let me see... Sorry, Chad. I gotta. I'm, I'm reading my list, and I have a lot of notes here. Oh, right. Yeah, Erst. I would love to find some of the more exotic equipment. I I wish that we could find like like heavy plating and heavy ferro and light ferro and stealth armor and all those other fun toys. Uh, but unfortunately, we just have not had very much luck in finding that stuff in this campaign. Um, but yeah, the, the other thing that I was thinking about was with the Jaeger. So I was looking at the Jaeger mech, and I haven't made a decision on this one yet. But what I was looking at is we actually have the ability to swap out the weapon systems that we currently have on this thing and put in two Clan Ultra AC-10s. Now, we'd be losing the Gauss, but we'd be gaining an AC-10. So the Gauss does, well, the rotary Gauss, anyway, does 45 damage, but we can potentially hit with three shots. Whereas the Ultra AC-10 does 60 damage, and we can potentially fire it multiple shots as well. Uh, yes, the rotary Gauss does have a jam chance. But so do the Ultra ACs. So, I mean, ultimately, we're, we're dealing with a jam chance regardless. But my thinking was, pull out the AC-5, pull out the Rotary Gauss, put in two AC-10s. The Jaeger mech's pretty slow, but the Clan Ultra AC-10 does have a maximum range of 550 meters, so we can still hit from a, a decent distance with it. But that's just something I'm toying with. I don't know if I'm going to do it yet. It's just something that I'm thinking about. Um, because the rotary gauss is fun. 
but in terms of a Gauss rifle, it's just, it doesn't do as much damage unless you fire more ammo. Which sounds like a great idea, but we're already devoting three tons in this mech to Gauss ammo, and that's a lot. So that, that's, that's my thinking at least. But I, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I've just been thinking about it. For now, I think we'll go with what we've got. Um, I may wait until a few more people show up and then we'll, we'll toss around the idea of the Jaeger. Um, but for right now, I think in terms of what we need to do next, unfortunately, we are going to have to start out the stream by traveling because as you can see, we have no missions available in this system. So we're going to have to head to navigation. We're going to have to find another planet. Uh, so right now, the planet we're on is a One Skull. I think we can continue to look for One Skull planets and see what's in the vicinity. Uh, unfortunately, our options are going to be kind of limited because clan space is a little rough. Uh, let's see. We've got alien vegetation, planet-wide forest. It's a poor world, so you're probably not going to find much in the way of stuff at the store. But again, the store is going to be pretty expensive regardless because it's uh, because it's Jade Falcon territory. Uh, right now, I think we're like 20 days until the end of the month, so at 17 days for that travel, we can make it before we run out of uh, money. Yeah, so we're 26 days from the financial report, so we can definitely make it to another planet before we hit payday. Well, AP Gaming, if you are a Jade Falcon, then unfortunately, you may just want to sit this one out, because um, we, we, we have been doing some turkey stomping the last what, two, three, four streams at this point? I mean, we would be stomping on Clan Wolf, but Jade Falcon was closer. Um, but I think we go here. I, I think we go to Treeline. It's, it's an actual world that has oxygen, so we don't have to worry about, uh, like, the lunar problems of heat dissipation. It's tropical, so there may be some heat issues. Uh, but I think this is a good move. For us. Again, it'll depend on the contracts when we get there. We'll just have to see. Because unfortunately, it doesn't show us um, who or, or what missions are going to be available when we get there. Calculating course now, Commander. But we'll go ahead and get on our way. That'll let us finish the zero G pool that I've been promising you guys. It'll let us finish our work in the mech lab. And we'll be there with maybe a week or so to try and make some money before the uh, the financial report comes due. And Fozzy, glad to see you in the stream. Um, welcome if you're yet your first time chatter, so this is your first time with us. But uh, yeah, it looks like maybe somebody gifted you a sub, so welcome to the Saturday stream. Hopefully uh, you will enjoy some BTA, and hopefully your weekend's going well. And I see you there, Car. Hello, welcome to the stream. Glad to see you as always. Well, there you go, guys. You have you have your zero G pool finally, as promised. I told you we were gonna get you the pool, but we got you the pool. Job's done, Commander. So Meg Bay's done. We got two more days until we get where we're going. Looks like we've arrived, Commander. We'll go ahead and visit the store anyway, even though, like I said, everything's gonna be really expensive here because the people that own the planet are very unhappy with us. Uh, Dark Sarah, yes. One skull is the equivalent of clubbing a seal under normal circumstances. Um, but unfortunately, this is clan tech we're going up against. So one skull is actually more like two or two and a half in most cases. We were doing some half skull missions, but a lot of them that we walked into was like one or two light mechs and then that was the end. So I wanted to up our difficulty a little bit, but not so much that... Uh, that we get stomped on. Well, glad you could join us for your first live stream, Fuzzy. Hopefully you enjoy. And swap Jesus with the the real questions out here in chat. How does a pool work in Zero G? You know what? I have no idea. I'm not even going to pretend like I have an idea of how that works. But they say it's a Zero G pool, so I'm just, I'm going to go with it. I would assume that future robot people have figured out how that works. Um, but again, we do have some e-cooling here. It might not be a bad idea to just pick up one of the plus twos. We got some extra money right now. 
just so that we can use it for uh, mech bay shenanigans. But otherwise, there's not a whole lot else going on. I mean, an RL-40 is tempting, but uh, for those of you that do not keep up, for those of you that do not keep up with um, the notes for BTA, um, they actually just released an update yesterday or the day before and further nerfed the reloading mechanisms for rocket launchers and cannons, unfortunately. So the jam chance now is even higher, but they do not permanently jam anymore. And if they jam now, uh, basically, I, I forget exactly what it is, but, but it has been another significant nerf, which, don't get me wrong, I understand why they did it. Because right now, without those downsides, rocket launchers and cannons were actually better than their regular equivalents once you got the reloaders. Um, so I agree with the nerf, but it makes me unhappy. So, unfortunately, rocket launchers and cannons are not going to be nearly as effective as they used to. Uh, but let's hit the command center. Let's see what kind of missions we've got available. Oh yeah, look at that. We got we got all kinds of missions and they are running the gamut. So we've got plenty, plenty of options. Rockets are good, Swamp Jesus. They, they are absolutely an outstanding weapon system. My only thing that I don't like about them is that they're one-time use. Now they are good for that one-time damage and they're super light so you can fit them in. Um, like they, they definitely have their place. It's just they're not as useful as they used to be. With the reloading mechanisms, you used to be able to use them like cheaper, lighter MRMs. Um, but now they've, they're, they're getting some nerfs to make them not quite as effective. And again, that's okay. They're supposed to be low-tech alternatives. Yeah, no, exactly. When they hit you with the rocket launchers, it, it definitely hurts. But right off the bat, I see gunslingers... We're looking at a medium weight duo duel. And chat, you guys already know. We've got we we've got the medium weight class covered. No problems there. So I think that's the first thing we're gonna do. Um unfortunately, it's not a very good payout, so we may go for salvage. Uh the salvage is not gonna be great, but we could get some interesting stuff off of this. So first things first. I'm the realist. Uh, we're going to clear the Lance Camp because we can only take two mechs. Uh, and I'm thinking that the two mechs that we're going to take uh, is obviously going to be the Hunchback. We're, we're going to take the Baby Back Heretic because we have to. Now, Erst wants to do dumb shit and, and wants to go in on a potentially a 55-ton mission with a 35-ton fire starter. Um... Mara, welcome to the stream on a Saturday. Hopefully you are having a good day and a good weekend. <sighs> you know what, Erst? We, we haven't been to Solaris in a while. I will allow it. I will allow it. Now, if you die, don't blame me. Because remember, you're not going to be able to buy your way back in if you die. So keep that in mind. I'm trying to decide, because this is going to be a duel, we're probably going to be in very close proximity. I'm trying to decide if I should put in one of our rookie pilots and risk losing the baby pack heretic. Because normally, normally that's the commander's ride. That's my ride. We could do it this way. Or I could give one of the rookie pilots some time in the seat. Um, because it's Erst in a light mech, though, I think we play it safe and I'll take the commander. Oof. Hi, Mara. Well, we'll be here when you get back. We're, we, are, we are less than an hour into the stream, so we will be live for quite a while. Should be more than enough time for you to get some drinks and come back. But we'll go ahead and do this. It's probably not smart, but we aren't very smart in this company. We do dumb shit because it's fun and because it's funny. And we'll, we will see if taking a light mech into a medium mech fight is a good or bad idea.
In the meantime, we'll have to imagine what we may be up against. Because 55 tons is the maximum limit of the medium weight class. And these are clan mechs. So these may in fact be the first clan mediums that we're going to run into. Well, we've run into a few, but they were like 40 ton clan mediums. So we could actually run into some decent clan mediums this time around. Yeah, it's definitely possible, Erst. It, it's definitely possible. I mean, don't forget, when we went into that mission several streams ago, when General Quarters got gut, uh, I mean, we were using two medium mechs and going up against two 75-ton Ebonhawks. And when he got taken out, we still had to basically kill both of those Ebonhawks with only one mech. So it's definitely possible, but there's, there's a fair amount of luck involved. And... Um, I'm not very lucky. So let's see. Darius of the Pool, what is your wisdom? This one's pretty cut and dried, Commander. But these two are apparently pretty scary badasses. Be careful out there. Okay. I mean, we're, we're always... Careful? Never mind. I just realized that was a lie halfway through saying it. We're not actually careful. So, now. Um, bad Darius. We're not careful in this company. All right, let's see what we're up against. Command interface let's see what we're up against. Now, if there's one thing that Erst and the Disco Inferno are going to bring to the table that these guys may not have, it's going to be massive speed and maneuverability. Uh, let's see. So I think for now, see, I don't like this because they're giving him an elevated position again. Part of me wants to fall back onto this hill and let them come to us, but again, that's that's not how we do things around here. So I say we charge straight into the tree line and see what we run into. Uh, what is that? I can't... Okay, so that looks like a shadow hawk, and this is... Um, shit, what is the name of this? I can't remember. But I'd take both of these. I would take both of these. Chat, what is this? What, what, what is this mech on the left? I know the name, but I can't place it. Stormcrow, that's what it is. Alright, so these would actually both be great mechs to try to get our hands on. Uh, let's see, we will run Erst up here, do the usual flanking maneuver. Keep him out of line of sight. And then uh, we will play the game. We will play the game. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. I'll tell you what. We're gonna reserve Earth for right now. Let us drive these mongrel dogs from this place. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna do the cheese thing, and I'm just gonna reserve down to one and let them try to try to move first. Oh, they're not gonna move first. They're, they're also gonna cheese. Alright, fair enough. Unfortunately, we didn't get eyes on them long enough for me to figure out what they have in terms of armament, so I'm not sure how we should engage on this one. Um, can I get to the tree line and still have line of sight? I don't think that I can. I'm trying to find the best position that's going to protect me from potential Gauss rifles. Alright, let's, let's, I don't know. I think we'll do this. This gives us a little bit of obstruction, which is going to interfere with our accuracy, but it may also interfere with theirs. So let's see, we're looking at LRM-15s and medium lasers, and we're looking at LRM-15s and medium and large lasers. All right. We can do this. We can absolutely do this. Good. God. Oh, they still have spawn protection. That's why. All right. I was trying to figure out why we had such low odds to hit. Uh, yeah, no, that is that is the Dagoth Ur voice pack for those of you that are curious. So you're actually oh you are actually gonna move, okay? All right, all right. I'll see your LRM-15s and I'll raise you a couple of plasma rifles in the back. Uh, Come, Narabar, unfortunately, they're not Trader gonna Trump. let us. They are not gonna let us. Um. They're not going to let us further reserve. So, 
We'll do what you do with an Erst. We're going to run up right behind this guy, and we're going to give him the full alpha right up the tailpipe. As you do. And we hit with most of them. That's, that's pretty good. That's a good first turn. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know if you guys know this, but when I don't reserve him, Erst actually moves faster come. than you guys do. There's a part of me that wants to reserve, but I know that if they do, they're just going to get in behind you. So we got a couple options here. We either melee this Shadow Cat and give him the full alpha and risk the getting shot in the back. But let me kick his shin. Okay, all right. What? Well, make up your mind. Either you want to run or you want to punch and kick. You can't do both. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Yeah, I, I think the smart money is keep the evasion high. So we will we will definitely hit and run with Erst here. Uh, let's see, we could do this. We could get our seven evasion from back here. And we'll get some additional help with the crystal field. So that's good. See if we can try to split these guys up. All right, that works for me. Can we, oh, we can kick and punch. We can kick and punch, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do if you give me the option. All right, did we, we did not expose the rear armor on this shadow cat, so I'll just take a side shot for now. So we'll take him from the side so that we're still facing our armor in the right direction. And give him the full alpha with both plasma rifles. Outstanding. Outstanding. And yeah, we're gonna get hit in the side. That's okay. I knew that was gonna happen. Reporting. Minimal damage. Wow. He actually shut down. Well, you know we're gonna take advantage of that. See, this is the one thing where we excel with plasma rifles because clan mechs run hot by default which makes it really easy to take come advantage of, of situations like this. Come. Damn, we're not quite close enough for melee, but we are close enough to get right in behind him. And, intoxicating innocence. and that's exactly what we're going to do. Erst, you know the drill. We'll even go ahead and precision strike just to knock this guy back in initiative phase. All will be decided here and I shall prevail. And we got the structure exposed on the Shadow Cat. Outstanding. Outstanding. Now that's some BS right there. He's not supposed to be going that quickly. Uh, we really need some evasion. We really need some evasion. So as much as I want to keep focusing on this shadow cat, I think we need to sprint out here. Can I get turned around and take a shot at the Shadow Cat? I don't think I'll be able to. No. Okay, well, if we can't do that, then I'll do the next best thing. We still can't get into melee range with this guy, but we can hit him in the side. So we'll do that. We'll do that. Uh, we'll go Precision. Again, just to knock him back a few initiative phases. And the best part is, not only are we hitting him with extra heat, we're also now going to increase his heat generation for, I think, two turns? Or as long as he has the plasma residue on him. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. So it looks like our boys are maybe getting a little bit panicked right now. They, they are beginning to realize that they might be a little in over their heads. So we're going to do the same thing. A noble blow indeed. Kick him to reduce the evasion, and then hit him with a small pulse lasers right in the back. Oh, yes. Farewell, Engine destroyed. Terrible. Unfortunately, only one salvageable part. So that's, that's not going to be great for us in terms of salvage. But that's okay. Uh, next thing is we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it to this Stormcrow. Kick him in the back, and then shoot him in the back. As you do. Targeting for 
physical attack. And we got the breach, and he's almost overheated. Oh, oh, well, I don't know if anybody told you this, Clanner, but clan mechs aren't great for melee. So I appreciate that you have decided to grow a pair. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to end very well for you, my friend. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Uh, well, you know what? A light mech probably shouldn't be meleeing a medium mech, but we don't do smart things in this company. Oh, right, I can't precision strike and melee. I always forget that. Well, if I have a choice between precision strike and melee, I'm going to go with melee. So kick him in the dick and give him the full alpha. A noble blow indeed. And the shots. You'd love to see it. Oh, and you got a headshot on that one. That's that is impressive. I like Commander. it. And we'll do the same thing. Kick him in the dick, give him the full alpha. Roger that. Repeat yeah. until they die. And he's panicked, so we might get lucky and get him to eject. We might get lucky. If we continue to wail on him, he might panic. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, and he's got a system failure because of the heat? Alright. So once again, we already know what this looks like. Actually, you know what? You know what? Let's give him the punch, just for some additional stability damage. Yeah, yeah, let's give him the punch for some additional stability damage. A noble blow indeed. My objective here is to try to panic him if we can. If I can get this dude to eject rather than having to blow this thing up, then that, that would be ideal. Orders. So let's see, can we Itamat get in behind and melee, unfortunately. But we can hit him from the side. So we'll do the same thing. We'll give him the punch. On my way. On for physical attack. And plus, there we go. Outstanding. You love, you love to see it, chat. You love to see it. Out fucking standing. Mission successful. Now, we only get one pick and five random parts. So, uh, the chances that we get a full salvage on this one are still slim to none. But we might get a few. We might could get a few. Yeah, for sure, Rio. The, uh, the... The great thing about melee is it knocks the enemy back in initiative phase. If you hit, it removes all of their evasion. So if you have a mech like we have with the Disco Inferno, and you can kick somebody really early in the turn, then it makes it much, much easier for the rest of your mechs to then dogpile on that guy. Well, hello, Rex. Welcome to the Saturday stream. And of course, as always, you are more than you are more than welcome to lurk as long as you like. Um, enjoy the stream, and as always, hopefully you're having a good afternoon. So let's see what the Savage looks like. Again, no real damage. No injuries. You love to see it. So the Storm Crow, we should have all four parts. We do. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of other parts on the field, so we may not be able to get the... I mean, it's very unlikely that we get the full salvage. Um, but I think we have to take the chance. There's a lot of really tempting stuff here. I mean, obviously, the 330 core would be awesome if we could get our hands on it. Another clan ECM would be good, but I think we gotta take a chance on the Storm Crew. It's a very remote chance, but we could get lucky. All right, cross your fingers, chat. Here we go. RN Jesus, if you were ever gonna give us a, if you were ever gonna give us a blessing, now is the time. Now is the time. Ugh, oh, that hurts even more. That hurts even more. To get three parts instead of four, I mean, don't get me wrong. 
I'm sure we will run into another storm crow. So, as long as we run into one more storm crow, eventually we'll be able to salvage it. So, plus we get another Artemis. Artemis is never bad. That's okay. I, I will look at it on the plus side. Uh, correct, Rio. Yes, clan mechs and clan tech in general are super expensive, but you get what you pay for. But yeah, the, uh, the, the three parts of the Storm Crow is a little bit of a tease, but, uh, the silver lining on that is there was a lot of salvage there. So we're actually pretty lucky that we got three parts. We could have gotten much less than that. So I, I will take that for what it is. Mm -hmm.